I'm going to compare Grok's deep search versus ChatGPT's deep research. So the first one we're going to go to is Grok. We're going to go to Grok.com. So if you didn't know, Grok has a feature called deep search. This is comparable to OpenAI's deep research. It's agentic, which means that it can go and do research for you. It will go and gather information from several different sources and compile them into a research report for you. The first step is to make sure that you're using Grok 3. If you don't have the premium subscription on X, then you may not have Grok 3. And you'll see Grok 2 here, and then obviously those capabilities go away. You'll hit Grok 3. You could also do this inside of the app. You'll see here that I could click Grok, and then the same thing can happen here. So I could use Deep Search or Think. And it says Grok 3 is here. Try our new features. Deep Search is search deeply to deliver detailed, well-reasoned answers with Grok's rapid agentic search. Think is solve the hardest problems in math, science, and coding with our reasoning model. So we could even compare how Deep Search performs inside of the desktop app versus the X app and then compare it to OpenAI's deep research capabilities, which is also agentic. So the first thing that I'm going to say is provide me with a detailed analysis of what is working best on each of the major social media platforms in 2025 to get the most views and engagement. I'm gonna always make sure that I click deep search and then I'm gonna click the up button. As you can see here, it starts to think very fast and it provides you with a breakdown of what's happening. And it does this pretty quickly because it's already searched a hundred different web pages. Also, if you click this right here, you can click expand and then you could really see like all the things that are happening. You could see a more detailed search and thoughts on the right hand side. And this provides more of its reasoning and it's logical threads. They call it thoughts. I know that when the live stream came out that Elon obviously said that some of its reasoning is obviously not provided because they could be copied very quickly. So it has some key points here. Then it breaks down platform specific strategies, starting with Facebook, then Instagram, X, YouTube, LinkedIn, and TikTok. An unexpected trend in 2025 is the growing importance of video content across all platforms with LinkedIn seeing a 34% increase in video viewership. This is true, and this was dropped less than two weeks ago. So Facebook has 3 billion monthly active users in 2025. It suggests video content, short form reels drive 65% more engagement. Okay. Instagram reels generate 22% more engagement. X, formerly Twitter on timely and trending content with over 2 million posts analyzed in 2024, showing the importance of joining relevant conversations. Hashtags remain critical. I think it isn't true because I know that Elon tweeted that hashtags don't matter. I'm not a Twitter growth expert. LinkedIn saw a 44% year over year engagement increase sharing valuable industry insights and video uploads, TikTok, short form videos, 22% more engagement. I'm surprised that with TikTok, it doesn't even talk about social media live selling. So that's a little bit disappointing. Reddit. I don't know why it even included Reddit, but no offense, Reddit. I don't know if you're a major social media platform. Maybe you are, maybe I'm out of touch. And then general considerations, do video. <laughs> okay. Now let's try the same prompt inside of the X app instead of the desktop app, and we'll see if it makes a difference. So I'm gonna click deep search, and then I'm gonna paste the same prompt, and I'm gonna click the up arrow. We're 13 seconds in, and it's analyzed 10 sources. 24 seconds in, and it's analyzed 37 sources. So a minute in and 90 sources. Just initially off the bat, the key points are completely different. So the Grok desktop version had 100 web pages that it sourced. And then the first thing that it said was research suggests that video content drives high engagement. 
It seems likely that interactive features such as polls and stories boost engagement. Again, what I find weird is that it ignored live video, the most interactive feature there is. And then this one, it starts with YouTube, then Facebook, then Instagram, specifically WhatsApp, TikTok, Threads, and X. So it even chose different social media platforms. And on this one, it says TikTok appears to favor live stream short videos niche communities authenticity and trend participation it didn't even catch the live streams in the desktop version it may be that because it has access to all the x posts as well more easily that it gets better information i'm not sure i just think it's interesting that it's the same prompt it chose even different social media platforms it's even organizing it differently by organizing it per platform. It showed a different style table, again, with different strategies mentioned and different platforms mentioned. I like that this one mentions live streams here and it mentions lives on Facebook as well. What I don't like is Grok within the X app didn't even consider LinkedIn as a major social media platform. And then you see here key citations. So even within the Croc 3 beta in the X app and the desktop app, it is different information. Now let's try the same prompt with OpenAI's deep research. So I'll go to ChatGBT. I'm literally going to paste the same prompt and I'm going to click deep research. It will turn blue. Once it turns blue, then I could click the up arrow. Now, this is something that Grok did not do. So OpenAI is asking me questions like, which social media platforms? Are you looking for general trends? Do you want insights on organic strategies, paid strategies, or both? Are you interested in video, text, images, or a mix of content formats? So I love this, but to keep it pretty simple, I'm just going to say major seven social media platforms, general trends, organic, and then a mix. So I've answered the questions and then I'm going to click start. But I think even this question alone, the fact that it asked that is huge because organic is obviously different than paid. Now from just the initial experience of this is that it doesn't show you everything it's doing in your face, which I kind of prefer, but at the same time, you're not necessarily supposed to be sitting here if it's agentic. So I know that when OpenAI released this feature, they made it very clear that basically it's okay if it takes, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes for it to work while you step away from your computer or while you go finish something else. And as you can see here, by the time it's already evaluated one source, Grok probably would have evaluated 20. Now the question is, does that make Grok better? And we won't really know until we start seeing and comparing the type of research that's provided. Now I will say that just with the initial analysis, it was nothing like super shocking. And even though it did say video, it didn't really say what type of video. It didn't give specific examples or case studies, use cases. I didn't ask it for that either. I do like the fact that OpenAI does ask questions though. And as you can see here, it's combing through the sources. As it's doing this, you'll see how the progress bar moves. And then over here, you could see the activity and the number of sources and which sources. So it says I'm analyzing Facebook's integration. I'm managing conflicting TikTok insights. I'm analyzing content formats. I'm pulling together insights on organic search. Reels outshine carousels. In 2025, YouTube will see significant organic reach and engagement shifts. So it keeps a trail very similar to Grok. But as you can see, the speed is very different. And how it shows the trail is very different. Personally, I do like Grok's setup better. It's easier on the eyes and you don't have to go and find things. It's just right in your face and it's prettier. Now, does that matter in the long run if you get worse research? I don't know. As you can see here, we're a few minutes in already. 
and only 16 sources. You could see a compilation of those sources here. So we'll see how long this takes. Now, what I find interesting is that when we compare the two, these are the sources that Grok used. So Grok keeps a list of the sources that it uses, but what I find kind of annoying is that you actually have to click the source. So the first source that it used was Digital Information World. I've never heard of that in my life. So you really, you have to scroll up here for you to find the sources. And then you'll see Night Social Media, Adam Connell, Buffer, Epidemic Sound, World Stream. So out of these like sources, I only recognize Buffer and Epidemic Sound. So I'm wondering if ChatGBT just goes to more well-known sources because as you can see here, these are mostly things that I would recognize. So I recognize Buffer, I recognize Hootsuite, I recognize Social Media Today. So ChatGBT took eight minutes to complete its research. And within those eight minutes, it only sourced through 23 different sources. It also presents the research a little differently. I like that it presents the research with a header at the top. And the other thing that I do like is that it presents the research with the links to the actual source where they need to be when you're reading. So it starts with TikTok, short form video and hyper personalized discovery. It talks about the For You page, and then it also talks about the length of the video, which neither the Grok app or the Grok desktop version touched upon. So what I think it's interesting here is that the algorithm and content trends is that it heavily weighs watch time, completion rate, replays, like shares. So hooking viewers in the first one to two seconds is critical. Then it says that TikTok reports that the first two seconds of a video are make or break and videos that quickly spark curiosity are 1.4 times more likely to be watched to completion. The platform also has become a go-to search engine for younger users. So TikTok SEO is now more important. Creators are leveraging up to 2,200 character captions to include keywords and hashtags that help content in surface to help content surface in searches. I think this is huge. Obviously the depth of the breakdown is much more thorough. It even goes into audience behavior because of FYP shows content from strangers more than people that you follow. Every video must hook and resonate on its own. There's less loyalty based viewing. This is huge. And then it says utilize TikTok's features, duet stitches and TikTok live. So I like the fact that it even mentions live here, going live can deepen connection with followers. Instagram, so it goes to Instagram and it says Instagram is doubling down on reels. <laughs> I have no idea if this is true. I am by no means an Instagram expert. YouTube, long form content, shorts and community engagement. YouTube remains the king of long form video, but it has also fully embraced shorts. YouTube shorts, vertical videos under 60 seconds. Now I think they had a three minute update. So that's a little bit outdated. So then it goes into audience behavior, key engagement drivers, high quality content and storytelling. I don't think Rock even mentioned storytelling. So it says good editing, cutting fluff, maintaining a good pace, using, using visuals or B-roll, also keep engagement high. Then it goes into compelling thumbnails and titles. So let's go to LinkedIn because I most know about LinkedIn and see if it got it on the money. LinkedIn's organic reach is all about professional relevance and conversation. The platform's algorithm has shifted to reward content that generates meaningful discussions. That's true. LinkedIn explicitly turned its algorithm to prioritize quality over virality. This is true. The algorithm still works in stages. It shows your posts to a small batch of connections first, and then it measures engagement. If it sees quick, relevant interaction, it will then show the post to second and third degree connections, amplifying its reach beyond your immediate network. Importantly, not all engagement is equal. This is very true on LinkedIn and something that people don't understand. A comment carries more weight than a simple like and a comment from someone who shares your professional domain. Like another marketer engaging on a marketing post likely counts more than one from a random person. LinkedIn reports that videos get five times more engagement on average and live videos even 24 times more.
This is huge. For LinkedIn users log on to advance their knowledge or career. They tend to engage with things that are useful or celebrate professional milestones or spark industry discussions. I'm actually surprised that it said this. This is huge for people to understand about LinkedIn, especially depending on what it is that you do. So for example, if you're like a career coach, you can't be like, like this post if you hate your boss. What people engage with on LinkedIn, they are very aware of. And that's why a lot of people don't get engagement because you really have to strategically design your posts to have people engage with it in a way that doesn't reveal a lot about their intentions. It's a little bit tricky. So personal stories, okay, definitely personal stories. A lot of people don't understand this about LinkedIn. So it's definitely getting it on the money here. The one thing that I don't see that it mentioned was... The one thing that I don't see here that it missed is the LinkedIn newsletters. And then it's even giving examples. Like yesterday, my five-year project collapsed. Here's what I learned. Don't skip stakeholder buy-in. So use a hook and easy to read formatting. Structure your LinkedIn post to be skimmable and enticing. Start with a strong opener. Then break your text into short paragraphs. Leverage LinkedIn's content formats. So it does actually mention the LinkedIn newsletter. It just mentioned it a little bit late. And that hosting an occasional LinkedIn Live can set you apart since many do not do it. I'm actually really impressed by this. We can obviously tell just from a first glance that the research from OpenAI is still much more in-depth. Let me know what you think in the comments.